It's a delight to have you here join us for worship at St. Paul's United Church of Christ, where everyone is welcome, no matter who you are or where you're in life's journey. You are welcome here. And we try to extend that very same love, compassion, and care of the living Christ who embraced all. Today's focus of worship will be on feeding the 5,000. And we will reflect on what feeds and nurtures our bodies and souls and how, when, how we can participate in the feeding of the multitudes. So open your heart, mind, soul for that, what nurtures you. I'm deeply grateful to all who helped with loaves and fishes on Friday. We have Randy Tanner here, the coordinator. And that help was very much needed. We were a little bit short in helpers. So all those who came, thank you, thank you. Every last Friday of the month, we do that. So the August food distribution is coming up at the end of the month. Also, a deep and great thank you for all those who provided school supplies, even, those, even though many of the children will, may not return in person to school yet, yet they still need the supplies to do their schoolwork and the learning at home. And we, your support for those low-income families is very, very much appreciated. And one more time, I want to express my personal deep gratitude for all those who participate in Vacation Bible School. It's a virtual program, and the focus is on compassion, how to be loved, how to be kind, and how to be you. I deeply believe God calls us to be who we're created to be, to be real, to be our very selves, and to be sensitive to that and to open up to that, to be loved and nurtured into becoming and being who we are meant to be. That's a great gift to participate in. I invite all those who have prayer requests to put them in the feed, in the comments on our Facebook uh, message as we stream online. And for all those who want to participate in communion, we have these small little cups here in the foyer. If you did not get one yet, uh, you can pick one up. And it has two layers. And they're not always easy to catch the differences. One is the small, thin, uh, like a cellophane. A transparent layer for the wafer, and then you take the big one to open for the juice. Now, from home, if you participate, you may have your own bread and juice, or if you do not, you can use the time to meditate on the self-giving love of Jesus that became visible and real in that communion, in that first communion that we try to reenact and immerse ourselves into that love. So whether you have bread and cup or whether you do not, immerse yourself in the very presence of the living Christ in his love. We tune in right now, open our hearts, and invite the spirit into our midst and into ourselves through the gift of music. And Carolyn Patton will lead us in that from the piano.
How precious that special gift of music you share with us, Carolyn. Thank you for lifting our hearts. Please join me in our call to worship responsively. God of all creation, how wonderful you created the universe and all that is in it. Jesus, living Christ, thank you for loving us and embracing us as we are. Holy Spirit divine, open our hearts and awaken us to your presence. Let us worship the living God. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of grace. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. <clears throat> Come to the table. meaningful and beautiful and memorable experiences happen around our tables where we share a meal in our core families with friends, with children, with parents. That's where we are nurtured, not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually. That's where we long and belong together. It is the living Christ, Jesus, who lived in fellowship, in table fellowship, with many who were left outside. He drew them in, and you and I are invited. We belong at the table of Jesus. We belong with him. To be fed, to be nurtured. And sometimes when we come, we recognize our limitations, we recognize we fell short to love like Jesus, and we fell short to live like Jesus, who invited all, who welcomed all. We recognize when we experience the grace of being loved unconditionally, that we did not do that as Jesus did. Our time of prayer is an opportunity to reflect on that, to recognize our limitations, our brokenness, and to come with all that's weighing on us to the living Christ and ask him to renew us, to refresh us, to nurture our souls. We do that when we pray. Let us pray. God of the universe, it is wonderful to be alive. We are surrounded by beauty. 
It is amazing to feel loved. Thank you for life's many blessings. In your presence, we recognize. We take much for granted. We also realize the basic needs of many people are not met. Many lack food, safety, and health care. Help us live gratefully. Help us live generously. Inspire and empower us to work for equality, justice, and peace. Give us the vision that a better world is possible. We share with you what is on our hearts. It is so wonderful to know the living Christ is lifting us up, renewing us, refreshing our souls, and he raises us just like on eagle's wings. My friends, that is good news. Let us sing and praise the living one in our hearts. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Thank you. 
Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every by his grace, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Good morning, everybody. We sure know that this past week was hot. The Almanac calls these days the dog days of summer. People used to believe before air conditioning that this kind of hot weather would make men and dogs crazy. Good morning, everybody. We sure know that this past week was hot. The Almanac calls these days the dog days of summer. People used to believe before air conditioning that this kind of hot weather would make men and dogs crazy. So I think after a few days, we can understand that. Today, I want to talk to you about a different kind of dog day. I'd like to talk to you about a dog day that we have with my friend Maggie. Because I think Maggie, if we watch how she lives, can help us understand the way Jesus would like us to live. First of all, when Maggie gets up in the morning, she's a great believer in the scripture that says, this is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice in it. Because she is happy and she's jumping up and down and she is just overjoyed that I'm coming down and she's going to get to go outside and run around a little bit. Once she has gone and done her business, she comes back in and it's time for breakfast. And this is a really exciting thing every day for her, but I don't think you think it's so wonderful because she doesn't get to eat Legos or she doesn't get to eat chocolate pancakes or anything good that we think is good. Every day she gets the same thing. But guess what? She's not like those uh, Israelites that went in the wilderness. And when God sent them manna, they complained. No, she doesn't do that. She's grateful. She has a grateful heart. And she just eats the same thing every day and gives thanks. And then it's time to go out in the yard. Now, as you can see in the background, I have a very pretty yard. And this is a place that has bunnies and squirrels and birds and all kinds of things that dogs like. And so she runs around and she is just going with a grateful heart. And then when she's done running around, she likes to rest because she gets up on one of these walls and it's all nice and warm and sunny and she just lays down and relaxes. She just rests in the Lord. And he certainly does give her the desires of her heart. And after that, she realizes that she hasn't seen mom yet. So she runs into the house. And normally I'm sitting in my big chair and she comes and jumps up in my lap and snuggles up because she is definitely a love bug and she believes the scripture that Lord says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And so you can see that a dog day is not really a bad thing. And that we can learn from Maggie how to take the scriptures and in very simple ways, just go ahead and enjoy our life on a daily basis. So I hope you think about Maggie tomorrow morning and you'll start and rejoice and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will, be, I will rejoice and be glad in it. So let us bow our heads now in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the ways that you teach us to know your scripture and to know your ways by the small creatures in life. Open our eyes and bless us and help us to go on and enjoy despite the heat, despite everything, knowing that we are loved by you. And so now, boys and girls, I would like to say, Stay cool, and Maggie would like to say, Woof, woof.
but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. A prayer for illumination. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be open. Amen. Jesus had just heard from his disciples that his cousin and partner in ministry, John the Baptist, had been beheaded. You can imagine that Jesus was shocked, sad, and grieved. That is why Jesus wanted to spend some time by himself in solitude. But Jesus was not alone for long. A crowd followed him on his heels wherever he went. Listen for the word of God as I read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Jesus feeds the 5,000. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the town. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, he answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. Here ends the reading. This is God's word for the people of God. We say thanks be to God. This is God's word for the people of God. We say thanks be to Let us pray. Living God, help us open up to you. Through your Holy Spirit, meet the longings of our hearts. Nurture us and feed us as just you can. Help us become receptive for you and show us how we can participate in feeding those who are in need. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, our brother, the living Christ. Amen. At the end of the last great war in Germany, they were many children who had lost both, their dad and their mom. Dad was often shot or killed in the combat, and moms often died through the bombing where houses fell together. So many orphans were left. 
and different organizations try to help. And one monastery where nuns lived, they invited these children in. And they noticed that in the evening, the children had a hard time falling asleep. And they were wondering what's going on. And at dinner time, they noticed when the children ate, some of them put some bread in their pockets because they were not sure whether they would have something to eat the next morning for the next day. So what they came up with is to give every child like a little bit of a larger role to take to bed with them so they would have something to eat the next morning, the next day, and it made all the difference because these children slept comfortably and well because they knew they have something to eat. It is a deep wisdom that our basic needs come first. As John Wesley and as the Salvation Army says, to a hungry stomach, bread is the gospel, or the gospel is bread. The basic needs are basic needs, and we try to help provide for the basic needs through our food outreach ministries. In addition to having food to eat, another basic need is a sense of safety and security, that your life is not threatened, that you know you will be okay. That helps you grow and develop and become who you're meant to be. And in addition to that, the deep sense of belonging, that we're not on our own, but that we have a family, that we have a community, we have friends, we belong to a network of people. Those are all very basic needs. And the interesting thing is that these basic needs are mostly met, thank God, often met in the core family, in how we grow up in our community. And when they're lacking, then there is injury and trauma and uh, trying to make up for that later in life. One of my spiritual guides, Brother Lawrence, lived way back in the 1600s. He was just a kitchen helper in a monastery. But while he swept the floor, while he scrubbed the pots and washed the dishes, he was so deeply immersed in the presence of God that he felt his, all his very needs were covered. And it was a little bit like a twist at his age and during his times. And I think his superiors didn't like that image very much. But he said, when I'm immersed, no matter what I'm doing, and connected with the living God, I feel like an infant at the mother's breast. Bliss. And the nurturing and the feeding, imagine of a baby, it's not just a physical thing, it's the being held, the belonging, the emotional, the oneness of the nurturing, being held by the mother and nurtured. In German, we have a word, it's called Nestwärme. And nest is the same as in uh, English, so it's the nest and verma is the worms. So the worms you get in a nest, and I think of those little bunny rabbits in our garden, 
when Mama Bunny comes, they're all huddled and cuddled together and they experience this deep sense of warmth and of connectedness. I think we have a longing for that. In Celtic spirituality, this longing and this need is expressed in what they call anamkara. Spell it just like you hear it. And it's meant or describing a soul friend, a soul guide, someone who guides you, a good friend who is with you. You can share with a good friend everything that's on your heart and mind. And you know you're loved still and loved for who you are. I think that's one of the deep longing in us as human beings to be loved for and cared for and embraced and uh, lifted up and encouraged and cheered on uh, in our lives. Those are needs too and part of our basic needs. Ignatius of Loyola from the 1600s devised the spiritual discipline in how we can explore biblical stories. And one of his ways, how he described that is, go into the story yourself. Try to find yourself in the different characters and get a sense and the feeling of what did that, how did that feel like to be in that person? How did it feel like to be in that role? What did it look like, the surroundings? So trying to immerse yourself into those stories. And looking at the feeding of the 5,000 or the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, we can do that too. Imagine being that one person in the crowd, one person with many others, longing, longing to belong, longing to uh, be fed, to be nurtured, to live safely, to be part of the community of those who come and connect with Jesus. Don't we all have some kind of longing to come to Jesus, to be nurtured? Think of yourself as being one of the disciples. The disciples come to Jesus and say, wow, this is a huge crowd. We'll never be able to feed these people because Jesus had said, well, you take care of them. It's almost like testing them. You take care, you feed this 5,000 families. They are totally overwhelmed. They have no idea how to do it. They start doing the calculations, the income, how many thousands of dollars it would take to feed all these families. You ever felt overwhelmed in the face of a challenge, of a, a situation where you felt like throwing up your hands and thinking of, I do not think whether I as a single person can make a difference. What did it feel like to feel overwhelmed like a disciple in that situation? And then there is this little boy, the little boy that appears in this same story in the John version of it. And when the disciples go and look for help from the crowd, there is this little boy. And the boy gives the disciples five bread and two fish. Mom probably packed him a lunch bag or something, just take with you a snack. He takes that, gives it to the disciples. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful act of faith and of generosity, this little boy? And he probably had no idea how to actually feed those many people. He did not know. The disciples did not know. But in faith, this little boy gave what he could, what he had. And that's how it started. Not being overwhelmed by the magnitude of the need and thinking about what I cannot do. 
there are things you and I, we cannot do. But the invitation of this boy is, do what you can. And there is always something you can do. This little boy who offers bread and fish is an example of faith for us. You can do something. Don't focus on what you cannot do. There's always something you can do. And bring that to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. When Jesus is in it, then there will be multiplication. Then uh, things will, uh, people get nurtured. And then the disciples in the next role, once Jesus breaks the bread and hands it to them, they become the link in between the hungry people and Jesus. And I think each one of us is called into that role. We are the people who are linked, the intermediaries in between Jesus who provides, who multiplies, and those who are in need and those who are hungry were called into that role. And in that role, the disciples are being fed as well. And I know our helpers at Lowe's and Fishes. They come, they help. And they receive something back. Something is always coming back when you participate in God's work of feeding. Whether it's literally whether it's being a friend, kind and caring to someone else who may not even expect it. Whenever you're immersed in that energy, it's almost like you're tapping into the well. And by satisfying the thirst of others, you're being satisfied as well in that process. Connected to the source, connected to the flow, being a channel for that very presence, for that very uh, nurturing aspect of God's uh, presence and of God's energy. And it's good to know for us, right here and right now and for our lives and for all the challenges we face, individually, as a community, as a congregation, as a nation, as a world, that Every change, everything that happened, every great project, every movement started small, always started small, with people like you and me, someone making a difference, someone taking a step in the right direction, one little boy offering his bread and fish, someone coming to loaves and fishes, someone opening their heart to the living God. A journey of a thousand miles always starts with that first step. That first step. What is your next step to take in feeding the ma magnitude, the millions? When Mother Teresa was asked, well, how are we going to feed these millions of hungry people globally? Her answer was, one at a time.
Our offertory, our offering is an invitation to reflect on how we, how you, as individuals, can participate in Jesus' work of feeding others, of nurturing others. That can happen in very different ways. For some, it's putting in sweat, blood, and tears at loaves and fishes, packing and standing in the heat at 90 degrees and putting those bags in people's cars. For others, it's caring for someone who is lonely, feeding not limited to the physical part, but to the emotional part. To whom are you a good friend? To whom are you a good friend? Who is longing for a connection? Who is longing to belong? Who is lonely? Who is on the margins? Think about it. Food, spiritual food, physical food, emotional food, nurturing comes in various forms. So think about how you can participate in that nurturing work of the living God.
we come to our time of prayer expressing gratefulness that God is good, that our needs, our basic needs are met. We come with our longing. We bring those who are hurting and struggling, lift them up to God, and then also asking the living God to make us instruments to help others in their need. Let us pray. Thank you, O living God, that you care, that you surround us with warmth and comfort, that we have enough to eat, that we belong. and that we have you. Even when we do not feel safe and secure during this time, we come to you. We do all we can, but we recognize how much we are limited. We recognize our limitations in your presence. And we ask that you Help us as just you can. Well, we do all we can. That you give us that comfort and faith and courage to face what we have to face. Thank you for all those who work in healthcare professions, those who provide for basic needs, whether they are farmers, those who are preparing the food, the groceries, those who work in the stores. We come to you with our longing, and we come to you with the hurt and the pain the longing for healing from those who are dear and close to our hearts. In a special way, we're praying for Harry Longer and all of the Longer family, Janine Brocious and her children as Harry's father died. We're praying for Alva Deans, who has been diagnosed with cancer on the other lung. For Sally Lauer, as she's recovering from back surgery at home. For Jack Lewis, who will undergo again cataract surgery, and we hope that will work smoothly. Jim Taylor, who will receive treatment for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Dennis, who is dealing with heart disease. Marianne Britton. Carolyn Patton, who is scheduled for hip replacement surgery on August 12th. Dr. William Bill Weeder, as he's recovering from surgery. Rachel, a friend of Joanne's Lowers, who is dealing with lung cancer. And we also ask you for your spirit to be very close to Gary Nottis who will be ordained this afternoon at St. John's UCC in Lewisburg. And we also lift up the parents, the families, the children, the teacher, who are exploring how the learning will happen this fall. It's certainly a challenging situation for all of them. We pray this all 
in the name of Jesus, the Christ. And with his words, we join together in praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Remember, remember, God loves you beyond your wildest dreams. We will love God back and love our neighbors as ourselves. Remember, Jesus shows us how to serve. We will follow Jesus by serving those in need. Remember, God's Holy Spirit is always with you. 
We trust that God will guide us in all we do. So go with faith, hope, and love in your hearts and be the hands, the heart, the mind, the soul of the living Christ with whomever you meet during this week. May it be so. The people of God said, Amen.